If we can get Darren Dreger on our screen, the pride of Langenberg, TSN NHL insider Darren Dreger. Dregs, I listen to you on these other stations, and we're not going to just fire machine gun questions at you. I just want to have a hockey chat with you today, if if that's good. How are things in your life, by the way? Yeah, things are great, uh, as good as they can be. I mean, we're still in a stay-at-home order here in Ontario. Um, so I spend a whole lot of time in my backyard and picking weeds in my front yard. The weather's been lousy, can't golf, but other than that, it's great. <laughs> well, we got out for our first rounds at Deer Valley this weekend. So here in your home province, it's fantastic. But, you know, as far as NHL storylines, and I've got a few here, but more than anything right now, it's the playoff push, right? And that fourth cutoff line in some divisions. To me, that's the biggest story in the National Hockey League this week and next week. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You know, it used to be you'd get to a place where you're jockeying for a playoff spot. And, and it seemed a bit absurd to me, even though, you know, we in the media talked about that storyline for for playoff season after playoff season, uh, you know, going into the playoffs anyway, and how, well, maybe this team fares up better at that team. And then you talk about load management, sitting guys and all <laughs> that. But the intensity in all the divisions, certainly in the North Division here in Canada, has been playoff like I would say for man at least a month, maybe the last six weeks, and it's certainly been intriguing. You know, I I picked the Winnipeg Jets as an example uh, to contend with the Toronto Maple Leafs for top spot in the division in the second half of the season, and they've gone through you know a real tough stretch here, having lost six in a row. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens are now winning at the right time, so there's a possibility that they could overtake the Winnipeg Jets in the North Division. So there's there's a lot of uh, drama and uh, a lot of intrigue as we get set for the playoffs with everything that's going on around the league. Well, I'll just say this. You know, you mentioned, admitted that you'd cut, a, cut your teeth in Winnipeg. That's where you cut your NHL teeth. Darren, yeah. you know, we're on the air there every day on Bell MTS Cable on Game Plus. So we get a lot of uh, reaction from viewers in Winnipeg. They're neurotic, man. They and they're not in a bad way. They're like they're like Ryder fans. They're psycho about the Jets. Like six in a row, they're jumping off buildings in Winnipeg. Do they have a reason to? Or are they are they going to snap out of this? Do you think? I, I think they will, Rod. And I don't get the same level of angst from the hockey club. <laughs> no, they're disappointed. You know, it's a bad time of year to be going into a skid like this, and that's what it is. This isn't a funk. This is a bona fide skid. But they're, they're still positive around that room. And I think the positivity comes from the fact that they bank so many points, right? So there's, there's, there's no concern over whether or not they're going to miss the playoffs. I mean, you know, so the Montreal Canadiens go on a run here and the Winnipeg Jets end up finishing fourth, which isn't likely, but it's certainly possible. You know, is that the worst thing in the world for the Winnipeg Jets? No, it's not. So the players aren't going into the games worrying about hitting posts and not scoring and all of that. What they're trying to do is clean up some of the areas uh, that have been uh, concerning through this skid. So that's what they're focused on now. And and that takes us back to the comments that Paul made after benching uh, Mark Shifley and how the, the core of this team needs to stick to the values that have made this team so successful. So the club doesn't share the same level of concern, but I'll tell you what. Um, everyone associated with the Winnipeg Jets couldn't be happier to have Adam Lowry back in the lineup. You take those two pieces, Nick Ehlers out and Adam Lowry out, and those are two pretty big holes. So uh, Maurice is going to put Appleton and Cott back with uh, Adam Lowry on a line, which for me is as good a third line in the sport, period. So we'll see if getting the familiarity and everything that Adam Lowry brings to the Winnipeg Jets gets them out of their funk. Hey, Darren, um, I'm curious about some of the coaching vacancies. Buffalo's won, but we heard Patrick Waugh's name come up over the last week. Is Montreal something that that Waugh could be looking at, a reunion there? I mean, he'd be looking at it, I'm sure. Um, You know, is ownership in Montreal willing to go down that road again? I mean, what a (laughs) historic Hall of Fame career, and uh, at least some of it. Uh, had some drama attached to it in his early days uh, and time spent with the Montreal Canadiens. But, you know, it's such a big story in Montreal uh, because of the way the team has played. They've lacked consistency until very, very recently. Here. They've got Dominic Ducharme, who, you know, he's a good coach, but he's still the interim coach. You've got, fair or unfair, the uncertainty of Mark Bergevin as general manager. Let's see how things play out here. If the Montreal Canadiens get on a roll, then these questions might be answered and it won't matter whether Patrick Wall wants to get back in the National Hockey League or not. But he is such a unique individual. Uh, number one, he's a winner. 
right? And and he's proven that even at the coaching level uh, with the QMJHL and the Quebec Rempart. But he's not urgently trying to get back in. And maybe he would consider something on the management side as well, which is probably why he hired Neil Glassberg from PBI Sports, his representative, just to make sure that everybody in the National Hockey League knows that Patrick is ready to climb back into the league. So it could be Montreal. That makes a lot of sense. But I wouldn't be surprised if there are ownership and management groups around the NHL with some of the vacancies coming that at least have a conversation about whether he might be a fit or not. Dregs, the second this Darren mentioned Patrick Waugh, you smiled devilishly. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I, I just love the man. Uh, yeah. he's, he just, he's got a heap of personality. He's no nonsense. He doesn't take crap from anyone, media included. And, and that's what we love. We love the transparency and the honesty. And man, he's got fire in his belly 24 hours a day. And, and I just, uh, the National Hockey League, Look, our, our lives in general just need more creativity and need more entertainment. And Patrick Waugh, for me, provides a level of entertainment. I'll tell you what, fellas, um, Adam Foote's a good buddy of mine. And Footer, and I'm sure Mike Keane would, would tell the same stories going back to the Colorado Avalanche days. And with great respect to, you know, uh, Bob Hartley and Mark Crawford and the good coaches back in the day, you know, Patrick Waugh, there wasn't much that went on around the Colorado Avalanche while he was there that he didn't have input in, you know, be it as a coach or some of the management decisions. He is a sharp, sharp hockey dude. The uh, There's a couple things here. Clark mentioned to bring up the new deal with TNT. We already knew that there was a deal with ESPN. What's that going to mean to salaries in the National Hockey League moving forward? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a while before we, we see the salary cap bump up, regardless of uh, the influx of, of revenue and, and monies that have been negotiated in this bigger deal. And what a deal it is. And, you know, look, it's bittersweet for me. Um, you know, I'm happy for the NHL owners and I'm happy for the business side of the National Hockey League because a good business in the NHL is good business for a lot of us. Um, but bittersweet because... You know, I'm, I'm leaving a good family in NBC, who's been my family south of the border and doing work as an insider on their Wednesday games. Uh, so many great people there, and many of those great people in front of the camera, I'm sure, will shift over to either ESPN or TNT. Um, but nobody there has any bitterness towards the National Hockey League because the commissioner's office, you know, went looking for a much better deal. And that's the deal that they ended up cutting, especially with TNT. So... Um, in a pandemic, in a world where the NHL just can't realize enough revenue streams to get their house in order, this certainly is, is welcome news. But, you know, the bigger picture, how much it will influence player salaries, any of that, I honestly, I, it's going to be a while, Rod, before we know that. It's going to be at least a couple more years. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I have ESPN in my house, and they're they're showing highlights now on SportsCenter and talking about it a little bit on their daytime shows, where before they weren't. So this is a this yeah. is a good good deal for the National Hockey League. Hey, the sure. Kraken. We saw Ronnie Francis interviewed the other night in one of the games for Canada. I think it was against Latvia and Texas. They're officially an NHL team now. Can you explain what went on in the last week with the Kraken financially? Yeah, well, they made their final payment. Um, and I, off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what the number was, but it wasn't a small number. And it was the installment needed to uh, officially shepherd the Seattle Kraken in the National Hockey League as its 32nd team. And beyond the NHL absorbing the funds and cashing that big check, this now allows hockey operations to move full steam ahead. Uh, from a Seattle Kraken perspective. So Ron Francis has been a busy guy, no different than Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee were prior to the Vegas Golden Knights jumping into the National Hockey League. So he's going to become somewhat popular and unpopular, depending on how you want to look at it and the player that he's looking at via ex expansion on your roster. So there's going to be a lot of horse trading. It's, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, the difference here, of course, is now he can follow a template. I'm sure that there are clubs around the NHL that, having gone through it with Vegas, aren't going to make the same mistakes with the Seattle Kraken. But I'll also tell you this, fellas. Um, you know, there were deals that didn't happen at the NHL trade deadline, and there was some influence on why they didn't happen because of the Seattle Kraken. Like, I think of Winnipeg. We talked about the Jets earlier. You know, the Winnipeg Jets were trying to land uh, a big-time defenseman. 
and they had some intriguing conversations. But you know, there there would be clubs who would want a player off their roster. Well, that player maybe has been targeted for expansion exposure. And if if you know you move a player like that in a trade. <clears throat> then you're going to have to expose somebody else and maybe you don't want to lose that player. So all of a sudden a three for one type of transaction becomes a four or a five for one trade scenario from Winnipeg's standpoint. So uh, Ron Francis and the Seattle Kraken have had their fingerprints over a lot of hockey decisions over the past few months. And a fun one to end, Dregs. Uh I don't think anybody's going to match Vegas's imprint as an expansion team, thanks to your Brandon boys. But I think Seattle's yeah. going to be an amazing hockey market. And let me ask you, when you went down there to call games with the Wheaties, were you wow. in the Rock and Roll Arena or were you in the Key Arena? I was fortunate to be in both. What's been your Seattle hockey experience? Uh, in both as well. Uh, I, I, just, I couldn't believe that it took the NHL as long as it did to get into the Seattle market. You know, just the, the, the obvious geographic rivalry with the Vancouver Canucks is tremendous, I think. And every time I'd bring it up, my Pacific pals would say, ah, Seattle's not really a hockey market. And okay, I mean, professionally speaking, I guess, but guys like you and I, Rod, who had the luxury of spending time when the Seattle Thunderbirds were a real good junior operation, um, I think we could build a case that it is a pretty good hockey market. And based on how quickly they sold season tickets for the Seattle Kraken, that's proving that it is uh, an excellent hockey market. So I'm looking forward to it. I love the logo. I don't get caught up in those sorts of things very <laughs> often. Um, but it's just kind of cool, right? Again, it's it's creative. It's outside the box. And uh, I can't wait to see how good the Seattle Kraken are right out of the gate again living recent past of the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, you go down into the market like that, and you know what it's like when you're on a road trip. You're talking to, you know, servers, wait staff, cab drivers, and yeah. they they watched Hockey Night in Canada. CBC goes into Seattle. Like, they know the game, and you're way yeah. further ahead there than an Atlanta or a Miami. You know what I mean? If they know the game. No question. No question. All right, Dregs, we'll let you go. I know you're a busy guy. We'll pick it up from there. Appreciate the time as always. All right, guys. Be well. Thanks for having me. The great uh, TSN NHL insider Darren Dreger joining us from Toronto. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.